Okay, welcome geographers. Uh, this lesson, which will be fairly short, is designed to allow us to learn about the global water budget. My intention is to demonstrate to you exactly how the shape and size of the continents affects the distribution of water globally. So without further ado, we will begin. So firstly, let's just say that within the global water budget, the main sources of water used by humans make up less than just 1% of the total amount of fresh water available. Yet, this is still enough water to provide for everybody. Now the location and quantity, as well as the quality of water, is largely determined by the relationship between climate and land features. Today I want to uh, focus a little bit on this particular fact. So what we've got here is a map that shows the different continents around the world. And I want to use a couple of examples to show you how the landscape, or at least the shape of the landscape, can often determine uh, where water is located, and specifically precipitation. So I'm going to go to my next map here. This is a map of New Zealand. And I want us to focus on the South Island, this area down here. You'll see we've got a legend on the right-hand side showing the annual rainfall for the South Island of New Zealand. Annual meaning for the whole year. Okay, and you can see that the areas that are maroon in colour, areas like in here and here and here, and uh, this orange and yellow, these areas are the lower annual rainfall regions, and this um, is the drier side of the South Island. Compared with the purple and the blue, which we can see here on the western side of the island, uh, is a very high rainfall region, very intense. We might ask the question why that's the case, and there are in fact a few reasons. Uh, one is that the the atmosphere that brings rain-bearing clouds comes from the west, comes from this direction where my mouse is moving. Okay. From the west towards the east, from the west towards the east. What happens is it hits the mountain range. And the mountain range extends from where my mouse is towards the north east, all the way up to the top of the South Island. This is an example of how uh, landform features can affect annual precipitation within regions. So in this case we have uh, rain-bearing moisture coming in from west. Now next example, I'm going to refer to China. So here is a map of China. Uh, once again we can see a bit of a scale down here. We don't need necessarily to be able to uh, read the the data along here, but we know that these orange areas are dry and that the darker the blue colour, the wetter the region. And we can see here that the area that's in the west of China is relatively dry and so water does not tend to exist here um, for a very short period of time. Any water in this location is going to be there for a long time but it's all going to be underground. And the reason for that is that um, it just doesn't get the rainfall required to provide runoff and fill up dams and lakes and rivers. Compare that to the, to the uh, eastern side where it's relatively wet and that's the reason for that is that it's near the ocean. The ocean is just out here. So that's another example of how the size of in this case, anyway, the size of China determines that rainfall has a hard time making its way inland. If you know anything about China, you'll know that uh, in this direction is the Middle East, to the north is Mongolia, and to the south are the Himalayas, all of which act as, I guess, um, boundaries, not boundaries, they act as... Um, retardants, I guess, to, to rainfall. There's no water bodies nearby. 
and you've got the mountain range down here that blocks moisture from the south getting in to this area. We call this the Gobi Desert, and we call it the desert for a reason. Okay, we're going to move on to uh, another example. I think I've got an example here. This is South America. Now, South America is a little different. Uh, South America, if you can see where my cursor is, here's your degrees of latitude. So this is south of the equator. This is north of the equator. And you can see that it, from about 10 degrees south to 10 degrees north, this zone in here receives a lot of rainfall. But it's, and, and this is where we get those um, rising low air pressure systems that create immense rainfall. So we have an enormous amount of water located in here. But then you look down into the southern regions and you've got these really red areas. Okay, I might go into all the reasons why these red areas uh, show up here as to 200 millimeters of rainfall per year. But just know that these regions don't receive rainfall. And so it's plagued with the same problems that China has terms of rainfall. So it's really important that we understand that the location and quantity and quality of water resources are largely determined by the geology or the shape of the land within those regions. Well that's today's lesson, hope you enjoyed it and uh, we look forward to our next one.